Mr. Math Blog here, and I hope you guys are doing well. This one is uh, called uh, Classifying Quadrilaterals. Okay, so quadrilateral, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. So our common core strand is uh, we're going to, how can we uh, uh, sort and identify uh, quadrilaterals by identifying the opposite sides and the angles and all of that stuff. So let's go tap some prior knowledge here. Uh, triangles. All the angles in a triangle, no matter what kind of triangle it is, always adds up to 180. Always, always, always. And in a quadrilateral, you guys, in a convex quadrilateral, they always add up to 360. And I know what you're thinking. What's this word mean, convex? Well, convex means it doesn't cave in. Okay, here's some examples, and, and we're only going to be dealing with convex polygons. When you guys get into my high school geometry class, concave polygons, they cave in. Do you see how this side caves in? This side caves in, caves in, and then it caves in. Over here, this side caves in right there, so that's why these are called concave. We won't deal with any of these until high school, you guys. We're only going to be dealing with convex polygons right here, okay? So these are the ones we're dealing with. So when you see that word, just think, you know, uh, regular polygons that we're dealing with, okay? So if it's a quadrilateral, they always add up to 360. Okay, so quadrilaterals are polygons that have four sides. Quad means four. Four sides and four angles. So there's a quadrilateral right there. One, two, three, four. Four sides or count the angles. One, two, three three, four, okay? And then so we can name these quadrilaterals by, by uh, naming them by their vertices. So if I put letters around their vertices, I can name this quadrilateral M-A-T-H. Or I can go the other way, quadrilateral M-H-T-A. I just can't jump across. I cannot say quadrilateral M-T-H-A because I'm jumping across. It has to go in order. So I don't even have to start with M. I can start with A and go quadrilateral A M H T or A T H M okay or I could start with T or H just make sure you either go all the way clockwise or counterclockwise okay but you just can't jump across okay so here's a quad where the opposite sides are congruent and these tick marks right here this tick mark and this tick mark uh, indicates that these two sides are congruent and this has two tick marks here. FA has two tick marks. EC has two tick marks. So the two tick marks indicate that FA has the same length as EC right there. Okay? And then assume in all of these pictures that uh, the line segments that appear to be parallel are parallel. Okay? So it appears that this side is parallel to this side and this side is parallel to this side. So this says segment FA, which is this top one right here is parallel to segment EC, which is the bottom one. And segment FE, which is this side, the left side, is parallel to segment AC over here. Okay, remember this symbol from our last lesson uh, with these two lines next to each other means is parallel to. Okay, now when you guys get into higher math books, you guys, some books use arrows to show that they're parallel, but some books don't. So I am not going to show it using arrows. But if you have books, you might see arrows like this, where this one arrow and this one arrow indicates that these sides are parallel. And this two arrows right here and this two arrows indicates that these two sides are parallel. But uh, most books aren't going to do that, so I'm going to stick with not using them and, and assume that they are parallel if they look parallel, okay? All right, so here's some common quadrilaterals, you guys. A trapezoid. A trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides. See here, the top and bottom are parallel. If I extended this side up here and this side up here, they'd intersect so they're not parallel. Okay, a parallelogram. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of equal sides. Can you see the top and bottom are parallel and equal? And the left and right are parallel and equal, so this is called a parallelogram. Both of these are quadrilaterals because they have four sides right there. Okay, a rhombus, you guys, is like a square that's being squished over. Okay, uh, it has uh, two pairs of parallel sides, the top and bottom are parallel and the left and right are parallel, and all four sides are equal right there. Does it look like a rhombus is a parallelogram? It does to me, since both pairs of opposite sides are parallel right there, and both pairs of, and opposite sides are congruent, then it is a parallelogram. Okay, a rectangle, you guys. You guys have drawn rectangles before. Rectangles have two pairs of parallel sides. The top and bottom is one pair. 
The left and right is another pair. They're parallel to each other. Two pairs of equal sides. The top and bottom are equal. The left and right are equal. And rectangles have four right angles in it. Okay, notice 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 equals 360. Okay, I don't know what these angles are individually, but I do know that they all add up to 360 because it's a quadrilateral. Same with this one. Same with this one. Any quadrilaterals always add up to 360. A square has two pairs of parallel sides. All the sides are equal. All four angles are right angles. So if I uh, married a rectangle and a rhombus and they had a baby, it would be a square because uh, squares have uh, all four right angles and rhombuses, uh, rhombis, plural is rhombi, has all four sides are equal. So all four sides are equal. All four angles are right angles. It's a rhombus and a rectangle together. Okay, here's a little mobile, you guys. It kind of describes everything. Quadrilaterals means all four sides. Um, if it's a quadrilateral, trapezoids are quadrilaterals, parallelograms are quadrilaterals, and parallelograms cover rectangles, rhombi, rhombi is plural, and squares, okay? So a square is a rectangle, is a parallelogram, is a quadrilateral. A square is a rhombus, is a parallelogram, is a quadrilateral. A rhombus is a parallelogram, and is a quadrilateral. Kites, we'll find out a little bit more in a later lesson, you guys. A kite is another quadrilateral, one, two, three, four sides, except these two sides, they're not opposite sides, they're, uh, they're called consecutive sides. These consecutive sides would be congruent, and these consecutive sides would be congruent. So if I mark them, you guys, this side would equal this side right here, and then this side right here, they're consecutive sides, not opposite sides, because if they were opposite sides, it would be a parallelogram, okay? Whereas, see, these opposite sides over here, this side equals this side, and this side here equals this side, okay? Kites, consecutive sides are congruent. But that's a new, another lesson, you guys. We'll deal with that later. All right, so here's an activity. Identify, uh, we're going to identify the right angles in all these quadrilaterals here, and we're going to use colored pencils. So we're going to um, uh, use the colored um, uh, color guide over here, the quadrilateral color guide, to shade um, uh, the ones that have exactly one right angle. We're going to shade red. The ones that have only exactly two right angles are going to be shaded blue. Exactly four right angles are going to shade in purple. Okay, this one's not getting shaded because it doesn't have any right angles. Same with this one. Same with this one. Here's one that has one right angle. So I'm going to shade that guy red. Okay. All right. Uh, so the blue is going to have two right angles, exactly two right angles. This one's going to be shaded blue. Now I didn't shade the angles in there blue because you wouldn't be able to see that they're right angles anymore, so I left those not shaded. Okay, and the one that has exactly four right angles, this one's going to get shaded purple right there. Okay, all right, now if you're like my son, my son is colorblind. He has a hard time with red and purple um, and that kind of shade of blue also. Uh, he needs bright blue, bright yellow to see the colors. Otherwise, they look all kind of green. He calls them green. But I don't even know if they're green because brown sometimes is green also. Anyway, okay, so here's the second activity. We're going to use a Venn diagram to sort these quadrilaterals and write the names of the quads in the Venn diagram. So I see I got, or I have six. We have six quadrilaterals right here. So we want to put in this Venn diagram the ones that have exactly one pair of parallel sides, this one that has no parallel sides, and this one that has two pairs of parallel sides. I'm just going to start here at the left. Okay, so if I look at this one, it looks like these sides are parallel, and it looks like these sides are parallel. So there's two pairs of parallel sides. I'm going to put that over here. So quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Notice I went clockwise. A, B, C, D. I could have said A, D, C, B. Or I could have started at D and gone this way or gone this way. Okay, same with this one. Those are parallel. Those are parallel. So two pairs of parallel sides. So quadrilateral E, F, G, H is going to go in the same circle right there. Okay, now this one, I can definitely see that these sides aren't parallel. And these ones, I don't think are parallel, you guys. And if I just double check, let's, let's double check. If I extended this line down here, Okay, so there's that side, and if I extend this side right here, I can really see that they're not parallel, that if I kept going, they'd intersect right there. So this quadrilateral is going to have no pairs of parallel sides, so quadrilateral I, J, K, L is going to go right there. Okay, all right, uh, and then this one has uh, one pair of parallel sides, okay, so that's going to go over here. 
all right and then this one also one pair of parallel sides so that's going to go on that same circle and finally no pairs of parallel sides that's going down over here with no pairs of parallel sides okay and just whatever letter you pick you got to go clockwise or, or sorry clockwise would be this way or counterclockwise would be this way and you don't have to start with U you can start with W okay it doesn't matter I just did it in alphabetical order alright try this you guys so classify each polygon as many ways as possible so I want you to write to either it's a quadrilateral or a trapezoid it could be and a trapezoid well it, yeah uh, or a parallelogram a rhombus and or a square okay so this one here you guys this one looks like this side is parallel to this side but these two sides are not parallel, so this one is a trapezoid. Now, there's four sides, so it's also a quadrilateral. So I'm going to say it's a quadrilateral and a trapezoid. Okay, this one here, four sides, so it's a quadrilateral. And we have, um, looks like all four sides are equal, so this one's going to be a rhombus, okay? And it's also a parallelogram, because this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. So I'm going to say it's a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, and a rhombus. Okay, all right, over here, this one is definitely a rectangle because it has four right angles in it, okay? And, and rectangles are parallelograms, you guys. These two sides are parallel. These two sides are parallel. So it's a quadrilateral, it's a parallelogram, and it's a rectangle, okay? All right, this one is a square. Remember, squares came from, it's a baby of a rectangle and a rhombus. So this one's a quadrilateral, it's a parallelogram, it's a rectangle, it's a rhombus, and a square. Don't forget square. That one's got a lot of them. Okay? All right, you guys. I hope this helped you guys, and take care.